Welcome to the Why You Need Serverless Microservices Yesterday course. So I'd like to start at the beginning from the very top of it. So we'll take a look at the 30,000 feet view and we're slowly going to drill in into the uh, more detailed parts in this course. So I figured uh, we'll first go through the course structure so you can have a better idea of what we're going to go through. So the, the first part in this course is about domain driven design. What does that mean? How can we take advantage of domain driven design to model the business itself? Then after domain driven design, we're going to dive into the architectures. Some of them are really very high level, but I think it's important that we transition from, from the business point of view and speaking the business language, so to speak, and then translating this into a architecture, into an architecture that I think we can take advantage of so that we have a fairly smooth transition from the business into a technical implementation. And we'll start out with the architecture itself. Then after architectures, we're going to take a look at cloud computing itself. Cloud computing in general, it doesn't matter if you're right now using Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS. We'll dive into the concepts of cloud computing and then we're going to drill down a little bit deeper in, into those concepts. And then for going further down even more, we're going to take a look at microservices. What are they and how can we take advantage of microservices to best fit the business? In this case, what's the best outcome for the customers that you're trying to solve a, a problem for? And then very last, we'll take a look at serverless computing. Finally, at that stage, we'll drill into all the things we have learned prior to that, including domain driven design, the architectures, cloud computing, microservices, and then dive into the, the nitty gritty, so to speak, of serverless computing. So let's get started.